Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon Battle Series, The School of Hard Knocks. So throughout this episode, like every other, we'll be jumping on to the Pokemon Global Link Battle Spot Ladder, playing under the Championship Battle Rules, which are the equivalent rule set of the VGC 2017 season. So, it is Friday, guys. I'm pre-recording this episode because I'm going to be away um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, playing, as you know, at the Liverpool Regional Championships up in Liverpool. So... Um, this is why I'm just quickly going to record an episode now. I'm probably not going to have time to do the anal analyzer after it, um, but we will make up for that next week when I've got a bit more time and we can really kind of grind down the all the, the bits and bobs and stuff that we're kind of really getting into um, prior to this week. I'm just um, a bit tied up with preparing for the tournament and trying to fit everything else in. So I just wanted to make, I didn't want to leave it so we didn't have a video on Friday. So I just wanted to quickly do some videos here. We are playing this band call this week. It's been a lot of fun. We got a bit complacent on the second game in Wednesday's episode playing that really hard trick room team. Um, and I feel like we just weren't weren't fully kind of committed to, to the match there. Got really complacent and let my opponent really get into the game. They had a very cool team, but um, I want to make sure that we're kind of nailing down how we're playing the, the, the team today. So uh, we've got a first opponent anyway, Gianluca, and he is rocking a team, a very cool team of mm, Alolan Ninetales, Glacian, Hariyama, Alolan Muck, Tapakoko, and Garchomp. So really interesting team call here. You've got the Muck that's going to be very threatening to our core. Um, that we need to be very careful of here. Yeah, the the nine, Alolan Ninetales with the Aurora Veil, the Glacian there as well, um, providing that probably Icy Wind and Stab um, Blizzard support. Hariyama with the Fake Out support there, uh, Tapu Koko and Garchomp is your kind of good stuff tag on core at the end there. So let's see, what can we do? Hmm. We could potentially lead. Nyanigo Koko, it does give us some options. Um, and we could take advantage of that acid spray. Uh, what do we want in the back? I don't know if I want to bring, um, I might bring Araquanid and Arcanine, but then we probably, uh, we're locking in. It's too late, it's too late, too late. We have to go with what we've got. So, we've not really got too many good switches in for the type of Koko, so we're gonna have to play around pretty carefully to get rid of that. Although we have got that Scarf and Ayaligo, which does put on a lot of pressure to that. Um, but like I say, we're gonna have to play around it carefully, not lose Nihiligo too early on, make sure that we're keeping it around for that Tapu Koko late game. So we're gonna see Hariyama, Tapu Koko come up for my opponent here. Revealing it is a timid Tapu Koko being shiny. Uh, speed time with ours. Huh. So, my opponent leads off with Hariyama, Tapu Koko. What are the options they've got here? They've got Fake Out support here, which is going to be very threatening. You've got to imagine it's probably into that Nihiligo uh, because of the threat of the Sludge Bomb here. Um, huh. I'm kind of tempted to kind of just go for... Huh. Like, what have we got in the back? Huh. Not too much. So, we could just go for... A a dazzling gleam with Coco and just a sludge bomb into the Coco, and then we know next turn that we'll be able to take it out. Just expecting a, a fake out into that slot, which I'm just going to lock in and do. So there's the fake out. It's going to be into the Nihiligo. We're going to reveal that we are scarfed though, and there's a thunderbolt. We should take this though. It's into our type of Coco. So we are going to get the dazzling gleam off. This does about 50% to the Hariyama which it's not going to do. Um, but we're, we're quite capable of going for a Z-move into the Hariyama here. We've got to be careful of the Garchomp switching on that Hariyama slot, but um, hopefully Gigabot Havoc now is going to be enough to take down that Hariyama, and we'll go for a Sludge Bomb into the Coco, which should clear the field. Hopefully, all going well. But my opponent is free to just switch things up. So we'll see what they react to here. They were smart on if they'd probably seen that this, the Scarf was revealed on Nihiligo, so that type of Coco could be switching out potentially. But I'm confident that the Game of Havoc should be enough to take down this Hariyama regardless. So, there's a Hariyama switch out. It is going to be into the Ninetales. Okay. Well, I don't mind this too much, to be honest, because at least we're not wasting it. At least it's not into a Garchomp slot. 
we are going to be able to hopefully pick up the KO onto this Tapu Koko now with the Sludge Bomb, which we do, and we'll be able to launch this big Gigabolt Havoc off into the Tapu Koko. We get a Beast Boost to boot, and our special attack, which is quite nice. And here we go. Nine Tails is probably Sash though, so this is the, the, this is the thing. Like we're kind of wasting it away, but at least we're taking it down to a Sash. Now he goes in a nice position next turn, as well as Tapu Koko. Even if that Hariyama comes in, you know it can only fake out one target. So we can pick up the KO on this Nine Tails this next turn, and we do see that Sash on the Nine Tails, but it might not be the Hariyama coming in. We've got to imagine it will be to try and get that. Aurora Veil support up. But I'm just going to dazzle and. Hmm. Do I want to target the Ninetales or do I want to target the Hariyama with the Sludge Bomb? Hmm. It's just if the, the Hariyama comes in and it, it fakes out the Tapu Koko and we target the Hariyama, then the Ninetales will be able to get the Aurora Veil up. Which I guess isn't the worst situation in the world. My opponent just thinking about what he wants to do. He's going to bring in the muck here, which is probably the better option to be honest. Putting us under a bit of pressure here. Now, hmm, we're probably. Huh. Hmm. We could Vault Switch into the Ninetales. Get Arcanine in. And, hmm. Kind of want to switch out Nihiligo, to be honest. But I'm just scared of the, the, the potential. I will do that. We'll switch out Nihiligo, we'll bring in Arcanine, and we'll go for the Vault Switch with Tapu Koko. I'm just scared of the Ninetales protecting here and the Muck going for the Poison Jab into the Koko slot, but it's more likely to go for the knockoff into the Nihiligo slot. By bringing Arcanine in here, we have got the, the Fiery MZ, so yeah, there's the Protect. Now we're going to see just a knockoff here. The Poison Jab, maybe. And there's the knockoff to try and get rid of that. Oh, it's into the Koko. Okay. So we do see ourselves through this turn. Which is nice. Okay, so we will go for that Volt Switch again into the Nine Tails. And I think I'm just going to go for a Flare Blitz into the Muck just to get some damage off onto it. So there's the Nine Tails withdrawing. Hariyama is going to take seat on the field now in place of it. Should get some good damage off onto it though. Kind of looks like it feels like it's an assault vest, Hariyama, from that damage. Um, and we'll bring in Araquanid. That's what we'll do. And there's a the flare blitz from the Arcanine into that muck slot. We will proc the berry probably. Put muck all the way back up to full health. And we lose our chance to get its berry. And there's the knockoff into Arcanine. But because we haven't. Ah, oh, we have got the berry, sorry. I'm thinking of a completely different Arcanine. We have got the berry on it. <laughs> um, We've got the berry on. Have we, what have we got on Araquanid? I'm sure we've got the berry on Araquanid, haven't we? Okay. Let me just check. Pretty sure we have. No, we've got the Waterium on Araquanid, so that's fine. We don't mind the knockoff into that slot. Um, and we're quite happy just to go for a liquidation into the Hariyama here. And do we protect? Hmm. I guess not, because. Yeah, we can just double it. We can just go for the Flare Blitz, like... Yeah, no fake out coming out. We'll probably lose Arcanine this turn, but it just means we're going to get a free switch into Tapu Koko and Iligo here. 
Miss the close combat. He will take down the Hariyama this turn with the liquidation, which is nice. This muck, I guess, is probably going to go for a knockoff into the Araquanid. That's a gunk shot. Should take this though, it is intimidated. Yeah, that's fine. And there's the liquidation. And we can just bring in Tapu Koko here. I think the hail will end next turn as well. So let's bring in Tapu Koko. And we can just go for a, a Thunderbolt into the muck. Hopefully it hasn't got Shadow Sneak and then just a liquidation into the Ninetales. The Ninetales will probably protect here, you've got to imagine. It does protect. I'll just double check when the hill does end. Yeah, hill ends next turn, so that's fine. Um, hmm, yeah, let's go for liquidation into the Ninetales and just go, we could go wide guard to be honest, just to kind of protect Coco. Oh, we haven't got wide guard. I keep saying things that we haven't got. Um, so let's just go for that bug bite into the nine tails. I mean, we could go for the dazzling gleam, but yeah, I'm just gonna go for the T ball into the muck. That should be able to pick up the KO, but my opponent just forfeits. Saves us that mind game. So, very good game to my opponent. And a nice way to start the episode. So we'll go into our next game. Hopefully have another decent enough game as that one. Um, yeah, I was saying at the start of that game, I was a bit disappointed with how uh, I kind of played Wednesday's second game against that hard trick room team. And I'm not taking anything away from my opponent because he played it very well. Of course, completely off guard with the um, the Crabawanable. Ah, I'm not even going to try and say it again. But you know what I mean, the ice, the ice coconut crab, um, and the hypercut are coming in really handy there, um, and doing huge damage to Arcanine with that crab hammer. It was ridiculous, and once Arcanine kind of went down, the whole thing just fell apart, which is a bit of a shame. Um, so I, I did feel like we just got totally complacent in that game and just let it completely slip away from us without really thinking through our turns. And you know, I want to try and avoid that when I'm when I'm putting these videos up for you guys because. It, you know, at the base of it, I'm trying to set a good precedent for you guys to kind of at least pick some ideas up up from. Um, and I don't know. Sometimes I just get. I think. I think the combination of just this week, I'm just a bit stressed with trying to get everything together and also fit in and get prepared for Liverpool as well. And it's because um, it's a big tournament, and I haven't played a big tournament in a long time, and I do feel a little bit of pressure going into it. Um, so I am a little bit, a little bit stressed out about it, a tiny bit, but it's fine, it'll be alright. So I think that had something probably to do with Wednesday, but I wanted to screw my head on a bit better for today and make sure that we kind of left it on a bit of a better note um, at the end of the week. So we have our next opponent, Casey Lau, and they are running a team of Porygon 2, Smeagol, Tokol, uh, Trapinch, Gigalith, and Sableye. I'm surprised they even got the Trapinch there. Um, so what we got? Uh, we definitely got Trick Room in the team. We've got two fake out support Pokemon with that Smeagol and the Sableye. Ha! The Torkoal is going to be a bit of an issue. Two Weathers here as well. And that Trap Inch with Arena Trap that is going to be able to trap us and stop us from doing doing stuff. But I feel like Araquan it's not too bad here. Um, we've got to be a bit careful that Gigalith though. That's, that's going to be a bit of a pain. Um, hmm, what can we do? Could lead Coco. Um, probably want to lead Araquanid as well. Um, let's bring Arcanine and... Yeah, let's bring Buru here. Buru or... Nihiligo. That's what I was going to click it. So we've got Nihiligo in our last slot. Hopefully it kind of reset back to that. It should do. That's how it kind of works. So, let's see. Sorry, I'm just looking at my phone and I've just seen something t tweeted about um, the European International Championships potentially being in November. So, 
if it is, I'll find out about it and then we'll discuss it all on Monday, guys. We'll discuss it all on Monday. They're very exciting potential news, but I don't want to concentrate on that too much now. I want to concentrate a bit more on this match. So we do get Tapu Koko in. Um, we are facing down against that Sableye and that Porygon too. Um, we're potentially seeing a Trick Room set up here. I wouldn't, the problem is with Volt switching out at this point in time, um, I don't want to Volt switch out into a potential Trap Inch uh, switching because that would mean that Tapu Koko is trapped on the field and it's going to be easy to kind of maneuver around and pick it off. Um, we could potentially see a Trick Room, a Fake Out from the Sableye, um, and a Trick Room from this Porygon too. Um, hmm, so what could we do here? <sighs> do we just go for the Volt Switch? Not really worry about it too much. Let's go Volt Switch into the P2 and go for a... Should we just sub? Sub while we've got the chance. So we put, yeah, there's a fake out from the Sableye into the Coco. We're probably going to see a Trick Room here from this Porygon 2. But it's just a, a straight up Thunderbolt taking advantage of this electric terrain. Oh dear. And the Paralysis. Oh dear. That's not ideal at all. Huh. Okay. And we do get the Substitute up. I wonder if we can just double into the Porygon 2 though now with a Gigavolt Havoc. Hmm. And a liquidation. That should be enough to take it down. You would expect so. Unintimidated. Gigavolt Havoc. I don't know if it will be, you know? Or if it's just a T-Bolt, it would be enough. Let's not waste our Z-move just yet. Let's go for the Volt Switch into the P2 and the Liquidation into that slot as well. We might just see my opponent just double into the Araquanid slot with a, um, a Foul Play and a T-Bolt again. So there's the, the Volt Switch. Doing a nice bit of damage to the P2. We can bring in... Huh, do we want to bring in Nihiligo? Not quite yet, I don't think. We'll bring in the Arcanine. And what's this Sable I'm going to go for? If it goes for a foul play, we're probably going to lose the Iraq when it's here. But it is just a Snarl. It's probably enough as well to take me down. Ah. Okay, that's a bit disappointing. We do lose Iraq when it. Unnecessarily as well, to be honest. And we take a Thunderbolt from this Porygon too, but... Hmm... I wonder if the P2's in range now to go down. Definitely in an extreme speed. And a Z-move, I'll take it down. It's just whether... Oh whether or not it'll switch. If we can catch it, we should take it down with this combination. So hopefully we don't see it switch. Huh. So no switches, no protects. There's the extreme speed onto Arcanine. Get a critical hit. There's a quash, but it does fail. And we are going to get the Z-move off. So we're not going to take any more damage from this annoying P2. We will be able to take it down. And we really take away as well my opponent's only option to um, to set up Trick Room as well, which is nice. But we have lost our Iraq win it, which is a bit annoying, which isn't ideal. My opponent did reveal the Quash there as well, so we do need to be a bit cautious of that going into this next turn. Let's see what it is, whether it's a Torque or the Gigalith. And it's the trap inch. Okay. So the ground type. Huh. Now I'm just gonna flare blitz into that slot. Huh. Hmm. Probably needs we're probably gonna get quashed here. Hmm. Let's go for the flare blitz, see what damage we do onto it. It's probably got the EVO light, so it's gonna be probably pretty bulky. 
um, and we'll just protect Tapu Koko here, expecting that Quash to come onto it and probably an Earth Power maybe, or an Earthquake. Probably not an Earthquake though. And there's a Quash into the Tapu Koko. We are going to get the Flare Blitz off into the Trap Inch. Wow, okay. That wasn't even a critical hit. This Arcanine means business. That's great, okay, that makes things way easier for us. So, Sableye is really threatened as well from this this um, this Dazzling Gleam that we could potentially throw out here. Um, again, we've got to be very careful because of this Quash. Um, it is going to mean that Tapu Koko can't function very well with this Quash in play. Um, hmm. Now do we switch in expecting a rock slide? I think we've got to expect a rock slide or a stone edge maybe. So we could switch in Nihiligo for Tapu Koko and try and just get rid of this, this Sableye here. Um, yeah, because we kind of, I feel like Tapu Koko is going to be like a lifeline here. We need Tapu Koko to take down this Gigalith more than anything else that we've got. So. Hopefully now illegal, hopefully we don't see an earthquake, because if we see an earthquake, that is not going to be great for us. We do see the quash, it does fail. There's the flare blitz. Let's see how much damage this does to this sable eye. Should do a good chunk and proc a berry in the process. Oh, we pick up the burn as well, which is super nice, super handy. So do take that recoil damage, proc a berry. And are we going to see a rock slide? Probably take down our Arcanine here. Yeah, there's a the rock slide. Huh. Hmm. Okay. We can't protect with uh Can't protect with Nihilator here. I don't think a sludge bomb's good. Oh, uh, sludge bomb should be enough to pick up the kill onto the, the sable eye. But are we better just going for a power gem, probably. Or a sludge bomb. Protect type of Coco, sludge bomb the sable eye. Hopefully it's enough. It should be. Or we could just go a power gem, which would guarantee it. Um, there's just the, the concern about earthquake here and then because we've already burnt our Z move, we've got no option. <laughs> I wonder if Coco could take, potentially, could Coco take a rock slide it should do right because what we could do is go for an acid spray and a t-bolt but that's probably still not enough to take down this gigalith to be honest so i think we're probably a, a better option here is just go for a power gem into the sable eye get the beast boost in the next turn just double into that gigalith hopefully my opponent goes for that quash onto the tapu koko here which it should do there's the quash it is into the tapu koko and we need, we need to survive a rock slide from this Gigalith. It's going to be very close. It's going to be really, really close. We do get the Beast Boost, take down that Sable Eye. It's been a bit of a thorn on our side this game. There's the rock slide from the Gigalith. Does hit. Ugh, oh, and it takes us down. Hmm. Okay. So I don't think there's much we can do now. Not a lot at all because I think a single target rock slide would probably take us down. And I don't think we've seen a Z move either, so. Have we? Have we seen a Z move? I don't know. Ah. I think what's cost us really is that losing the Iraq when it's so early on in the game um, is just give us like no chance at all to kind of come back really. Stone Edge. Oh, we do avoid. Okay. If we can stall out the sand, there is two turns left. I don't think we're going to be able to. Um, okay. So let's protect either way. But again, probably Tapu Bulu would have been a better option here. Just having a good switch in for 
something like um, Thunderbolt. You know, we are bringing the terrain. There is a Porygon 2 on the opponent's side of the field. There is every chance that they're going to um, have Thunderbolt. And we had nothing in the back that we could really switch in safely. We could have switched in the Nihiligo, but then we're not really... I guess that would have been an option. Or the Arcanine here. Um, we're really hoping here for another Stone Edge miss, and that's all we can kind of go for here. Uh, just a T-Bolt. A critical hit will probably win the game, but you don't really like banking on these things. And we pick up the Paralysis. Oh my god. Uh, huh. I feel terrible for my opponent here. Um, and yeah, they're just disconnecting. And... I don't blame them too much there because we had no right to win that game. They played it out really well and we kind of got away with it um, just through the RNG rolls there, which was really unfortunate for my opponent. I don't condone disconnecting though in any situation, however frustrating it is. Um, this is Pokemon at the end of the day and you know, these things can happen um, is part of the game. Um, but very unfortunate for my opponent. Um, the Stone Edge miss, if it connected there, the Tapu Koko would have went down and we would have lost the game. And then, you know, that paralysis there is pretty harsh. It's weird how many times you paralyze, you get paralyzed or you paralyze something. And that first turn that you paralyze it, it or oh, you're paralyzed, you're fully paralyzed that turn. It's weird how often that happens. I wonder if there's some like RNG like glitch that kind of makes that happen more often than not. Or I guess it is a one in four chance, so you know it's probably just an odds thing. But um, we'll wrap things up there, guys. We've had a couple of good games with the team. Uh, got a bit fortunate there at the end, and uh, I, I will say good game to my opponent. And um, they definitely deserve the win. Um, I would like to reflect on the games, but as I say, I just don't have any time. I've tried to fit as much time as I can into making sure that I've got two videos out for you guys um, on Thursday, yesterday, and um, I didn't want to miss a video today, Friday, um, for the School of Hard Knocks um, to round things up nicely for the week before we take a break. Um, so I hope you guys appreciate um, that I, I just have other stuff going on at the minute. And I'm really sorry that I haven't had more time to, to, to put into the videos this week. Um, they feel a bit slapdash in places, but hopefully they're, they're all right for you guys. If you have enjoyed the episode, as always, guys, please leave a like. That is massively appreciated. Smash that like button. Um, if you're new to the channel, um, hello. Just welcome to the channel. It's great to have you here. Um, just subscribe if you can, if you aren't already, so you get all the daily updates for our School of Hard Knocks series, uh, Battle Spot Double series, which we're really getting into now in a very exciting series, and our QR Code series, and NBL as well, NBL Season 2. So NBL Season 2, our team builder against Team Flawless will be up in about half an hour if you're watching this video at half past seven. So it will go live at eight o'clock this evening. Um, so do check that out. And the match will be on my mate Hibiki's channel next week. So do check that. Um, sorry, not next week. Tomorrow, Saturday. Um, what am I talking about? And it will be linked in the description below of the team builder and probably this video as well. So you can go and watch that. Um, and it'd be great to hear what you guys think of this team this week. Um, whether you want to carry it on. And depending on how I do in Liverpool, we might play my Liverpool Regionals team um, next week. Still undecided. But this is... I'm recording this on Wednesday just so I've got a bit more time. So I'm still not 100% there with the team. But um, do stay in touch, guys. Let me know what your thoughts are on the episode and things like that. Um, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, again, like I said in the Battle Spot Double Series yesterday, I will be keeping up to date with everything at the event um, through my Twitter account. So if you don't follow me on there, do come and follow me on Twitter. Um, my handle is on the channel art at OsirisVGC, so you can follow me there. And I will keep you up to date as much as I can of the event and what's happening, how I'm getting on, how other players are doing in the event as well as. I'll be doing some little vlog videos as well, so we might do those live or I might just save them and do a little recap of the event next week sometime so you guys can see how I um, I travelled up, got on at the event so um, that might be something fun to do um, for future events and things like that um, but guys I hope you all have an amazing weekend um, as always I really appreciate you here being here watching the videos and I just hope you, you're all enjoying them as much as I am doing them, recording them myself um, but uh, I, I feel a bit like the, the, the team this week, we've, we've not really had much chance to play it so hopefully we can take this team maybe into next week if you guys want to see it but let me know what you guys want to do for next week's videos um, but um, I feel like after this weekend we can get back into a, a bit more of a, a, a more structured schedule going forward so it'll be a lot of fun 
to get ready for that. But um, I'll let you all go. Enjoy your weekends, guys. Make sure you're having fun, whatever you're doing. And uh, I will see you all next week on Monday. So until then, guys, thanks as always. And bye-bye.